Welcome to our Lord's Day devotional. As we continue to look through the Proverbs this day, we look at industry. That is the idea of the wisdom of being diligent in work. Now, before we look at select Proverbs to discuss this, the, this, the wisdom of industry, uh, we'll sing a song together and then we'll come back and we'll look at this topic. Now, as we look at the wisdom of industry, the nature of the Proverbs is such that we have to do this really by way of negation. This is because the Proverbs don't really talk all that much about the wisdom of industry or diligence or hard work, but they do a lot. They do have a lot to say about the sluggard, the one who is anti-industrious and diligent. So we're going to learn about what it means to be industrious, the wisdom of, of being industrious, by learning what it is to uh, be a sluggard, and then reversing that. So we're going to look at this in two topics. First, we're going to look at the sluggard's attitude and the sluggard's reward. We'll look first at the sluggard's attitude and then the sluggard's reward. And at each of these topics at the end of each of these topics we'll consider how that plays into industry so let's begin by looking at uh, proverbs chapter 26 we'll look at verses 13 to 16 going through uh, what they have to say about the sluggard verse 
13 begins, the sluggard says, there is a lion in the road. There's a lion in the streets. Now, this verse begins a concentrated analysis of the sluggard that highlights the folly of his attitude. We see first a risk aversion that's set forth in this verse. But really what it is is a convenient excuse to avoid having to work. You know, if there's a lion in the road, then the sluggard may die on the either on his way or in the course of his working. And therefore, it's just better to stay home and not work at all than risk anything. Now, these are in the, the Proverbs of Solomon, and he continues in verse 14, laying on some satire. And he compares the sluggard to a door hinge. Here, verse 14, he says, As a door turns on its hinges, so does a sluggard on his bed. And the idea here is that even the, even the moves of the sluggard uh, don't get him anywhere. He's anchored to his couch, just like the hinge is anchored to the wall. And the Old Testament commentator Bruce Waltke notes the irony that a door hinge is actually more productive than the sluggard because at least it does work when it swings back and forth. The point in this verse, at least, is that the sluggard is not interested in making any progress toward honest work. But he continues on in verse 15, and it gets worse. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish and wears him out to bring it back to his mouth. Here, not only is there no interest in making progress toward honest work, but the sluggard is so lazy that the thought of doing basic necessities wears him out. The thought of doing it wears him out. It's the idea here, and it presents the sluggard as the antithesis of the industrious worker. Of course, the worst part of all is in verse 16 here. The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. Here, here Solomon says that the sluggard is not only lazy, but he's immune to correction. In his own mind, the sluggard has everything figured out, no matter what anyone else says, and he is deluded into thinking that his diligent avoidance of work is the wisest way to live. So we see this is the attitude of the slugger as it is uh, laid forth uh, here and then other places within uh, the Proverbs, but they are uh, mostly uh, repeating what Solomon says. But if we take the opposite of this perspective to consider the wisdom of industry, we see that it begins with the resolve to set aside convenient excuses uh, in order to go about a day's work. The industrious person has the motivation to get out of bed and to get going with each day's work. The industrious and diligent person is wise enough to know that he's not the smartest man in the room. And though he may drag throughout the day, the wise, industrious man has a motivation to get up and to go about an honest day's work being corrected if he's slow and lazy because he understands that he must work. And so we see here both the sluggard's attitude and when we negate it, the attitude of a man of industry, a man or woman of industry. But, but of course, attitudes don't uh, aren't isolated here. Uh, the sluggard's attitude has consequences, and those are shown uh, throughout the Proverbs. And so we can briefly ad uh, assess what you might call the sluggard's reward for his lack of industry. And we'll look first at Proverbs chapter 24, verses 30 to 34. And then there's an, another parallel uh, passage that's very similar in Proverbs chapter 6. So uh, let's go to that now. As I know this is a lot of text that's put on the screen right here, but what we see in these two more or less parallel passages is the fruit, the negative fruit, of avoiding work. The wise man in Proverbs chapter 24 notes the lack of maintenance of the sluggard's property that leads to its ruin and ultimately the owner's ruin. He sees an overgrown field covered with thorns and nettles and a wall that's broken down. 
On the flip side, the Proverbs 6 passage on the right points the sluggard to the diligence and preparation of the ant who works in order to have what it needs when winter comes and food is scarce. You see, these two passages are warning the sluggard that the reward for his attitude will ultimately be poverty. And so they end in the same way, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. You see, the reward of an attitude of laziness, as it's brought out, is a lack of what you need. And there are a number of other proverbs that reinforce this reward, you could say, and offer a further nuance. And so we'll look first at Proverbs chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Here again, the same idea is laid out. A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. This reminds us uh, that poverty as a result of laziness is not something to boast in. Proverbs 19.15 reminds us that the sluggard's poverty will at least eventually impact his well-being. It says slothfulness casts into a deep sleep and an idle person will suffer hunger. And Proverbs 20 verse 4 implies the lasting impact of the sluggard's foolishness. Another way of saying that is short-term pleasure can lead to long-term pain. It says the sluggard does not plow in the autumn, he will seek at harvest and have nothing. And so we see that this reward for the sluggard's laziness ultimately is poverty, a lack of what he needs. And what's worse is that the sluggard's reward for his attitude not only affects him, but makes him a burden on others. If we continue on, we see in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 26, uh, uh, an evaluation of the sluggard's uh, reward. That, that really doesn't mince words here. Look at this. He says, Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to those who send him. The sluggard is independable. He becomes a burden, uh, an irritation to those around him. Furthermore, Proverbs 18.19 goes a little bit further and says, that The sluggard's lack of industry is in fact similar to someone who blows up everything in his path. He is, as it says, a brother to him who destroys because all he does is take and he never gives because he never produces. Now, this reward, this attitude and the reward eventually will catch up with the slugger and he will be rewarded at least uh, functionally with slavery. This is a stark uh, conclusion to the Proverbs look at the reward of the sluggard and it comes in verse uh, 24 of chapter 12. There it says, The hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to forced labor. The point of the contrast in this proverb is to say that the one who cannot even master himself will eventually be mastered by someone else. The sluggard won't have freedom in his work because his lack of discipline will put him into a position of grabbing at whatever will come his way so that he can survive. Now, again, Bruce Waltke makes a really important point for us to see. That though the sluggard will come to poverty, the Proverbs, at least, never equate the sluggard with the poor. Because the poor are, by virtue of circumstances, are the, they are so by virtue of circumstances beyond their control. But quite to the contrary, the sluggard, as we have seen both because of his attitude and ultimately the reward that he gets for it, he is poor by virtue of moral degeneracy. He is not worthy, Mulkey says, to be called poor. And so the reward of the slugger here is poverty and functionally slavery. He brings himself into poverty and he drags others down. And so that's the reward of the sluggard. But since we are concerned about the wisdom of industry primarily, we need to end with what the industrious person's rewards are. 
and we do this by negating what's already been said to say that at least some of the rewards for industry are satisfaction and generosity. If the sluggard doesn't have what he needs, then those who seek to work diligently will find what they need. And more than that, there's a promise that they who, see, who work diligently will have enough to give to others. Now, I'm not going to go through select Proverbs to reinforce this reward for the wisdom of industry because you can do that during the time of discussion and there is a question that allows you uh, to dig through this. But we need to see the importance of industry and working an honest day's labor in order to bring glory to God, to satisfy our needs, and to be generous to others. Now, at this point, let's uh, lay out the discussion questions, and then you can discuss them around your table or wherever you are. First of all, discuss the differences between spiritual or psychological and physical hindrances to industrious work. What are valid reasons for not working diligently? Second, discuss the differences between someone who can't work and someone who won't work. And how does our response differ between the two situations? I'll give you a few proverbs to look at for that. Finally, read the, these proverbs and discuss how do they show that the wisdom of industry yields satisfaction and abundance. I hope you see that there is a wisdom to diligence and in industry in our labor, whatever our day's labor might be. Pray that you would uh, seek to work diligently, uh, that uh, God may be glorified in your work. Let's go to God in prayer. And our Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks that we can uh, work. We give you thanks that work is good and that you have uh, called us uh, to have dominion over this world, that we might uh, be fruitful, that we might multiply, that we might cultivate, that we might grow and build and bring glory to you through our efforts. I pray that you would give us the grace to be diligent in our labors, and that we might bring glory to you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.